Hi, it's Katrina. Bronze Age Metropolis A giant metropolis from the Bronze Age that was once home to 6,000 people has been unearthed in Israel. The metropolis is complete with a huge temple, a mysterious cemetery, and even bones that may have been used during animal sacrifices. This huge city was once the biggest in the region during its time, taking up about 161 acres, a huge plot of land for 5,000 years ago. Archaeologists are calling it the Bronze Age New York because of how big it is. From what archaeologists have gathered so far from excavations, the city utilized urban planning with separate neighborhoods, designated public spaces, and advanced street planning. It was a cosmopolitan filled with thousands of people, though of course, today, it's hard to imagine only 6,000 people making up a huge city. But remember that back then, there weren't that many people around to begin with. This site is known as En Esur, and it may have even been the home for people from various different cultures and kingdoms. People from all across the Middle East may have moved here in search of riches and a better life, sort of the same reasons people have today for moving to a big city. While the archaeologists were excavating the lost ancient city, they found the ruins of an even older settlement from 7,000 years ago. Though significantly older than the city that rose up in its place, it may have been the original settlement, making it a place that people have lived for thousands of years, and it must have been quite special. Gigantia Temples The Gigantia Temples are some of the most fascinating megaliths anywhere in Europe. Located in Malta, some of the pieces of stone used to build the temples are over 15 feet long and weigh over 50 tons. The legend goes that thousands of years ago, Malta was home to a race of giants who constructed the prehistoric temples. In reality, the ancient structures came from a very intelligent group of people. They developed extremely sophisticated technology that allowed them to construct the temples between the years 3600 and 3200 BC. The temples came before both Stonehenge and the Great Pyramid of Giza, and so the earliest temple here is considered one of the oldest freestanding monuments anywhere on the planet. Despite how old these fascinating temples are, they are still in great condition. Yes, they're in ruins, but experts have still been able to figure out what the temples would have looked like back when they were built. As for what the temples were used for, it likely had something to do with communal rituals. Hundreds of people gathered in front of the temple complex where ceremonial activities were carried out inside, often involving the slaughter of animals, chanting, and perhaps even music from ancient instruments. It's believed that the people here worshipped a giantess who in the local folklore was responsible for building the temples after having children with an ordinary man. The rituals were to bring fertility as the people believed the giantess would help them have many healthy children. Shimao The lost city of Shimao was discovered just recently when archaeologists took a closer look at some ancient stone walls at the edge of the Mu'us Desert in northern Shanxi. For decades, the locals simply thought the ruins were part of the Great Wall of China. But once excavations got underway, archaeologists realized they were dealing with something significantly older than the Great Wall. It turned out to be a forgotten city that dates back to the year 2300 BC. Over the past decade, archaeologists have been hard at work uncovering the secrets of this ancient place. So far, researchers working with the Shanxi Provincial Institute of Archaeology have found fortifications, advanced infrastructure, thousands of artifacts, and even a massive pyramid that once stood 230 feet high. This pyramid was probably the residence of the ruling leaders and their families. The position of Shimao has been a little curious for archaeologists because they had always thought that the Chinese civilization first developed 500 years after Shimao was founded. They also thought Chinese civilization came from the Central Plains, not to the north, near the border of Mongolia. And to make matters even more confusing, there is absolutely no written record anywhere in history of this city existing. Nobody knew about it, even though it was clearly a powerful kingdom with advanced knowledge and unique architecture. It was probably the most advanced urban city anywhere in China at the time, and yet there is no mention of it anywhere. Even after all the excavations, Scientists can't figure out why or how the ancient city remained a mystery for so long. Mysterious Temple A recent drought in Iraq has revealed an amazing palace built 3,400 years ago by a mysterious empire. It happened when the water in the Mosul Dam Reservoir began to recede. 
Archaeologists from Germany were quick to arrive in Iraq and try to excavate as much as they could before the waters rose again and covered the ancient palace. These archaeologists believe the palace was built by the Mitanni Empire, one of the most enigmatic empires of ancient times. Only a handful of ruins are still around today, with the capital still being a total mystery. Nobody knows much about the Mitanni, which is why archaeologists were so desperate to get as much as they could from the submerged palace before it was too late. They found clay tablets, walls that were once painted in bright colors, and evidence that the palace was probably part of a huge city. After all, it's doubtful this mighty empire built a palace in the middle of nowhere. It was almost certainly part of a larger site. Archaeologists are currently working to decipher the mysterious clay tablets they found to gain more information. All we know about these people so far is that they ruled northern Mesopotamia from between 1500 to 1360 BC, a very brief period considering. They rose and fell pretty much in the blink of an eye. The researchers would love to know where they came from and what happened to make them vanish so quickly. I want to give a big shout out to Oliver F. Rupert and Carolejo420 for supporting this channel. Thanks for coming over to our little corner of the internet. And if you want to learn more about amazing discoveries, be sure to hit that subscribe button for more videos like these. Ancient Smokehouse An ancient site dating back to 5,000 years ago has been discovered in Siberia. It is a strange place, covered with ancient pits in the ground that turned out to be a Neolithic smokehouse. This archaeological site was used by the local people to collectively cook all of their meat. Fish and other animals were processed here inside of these huge pits. Researchers from the Russian Academy of Sciences say they used a method that is still being used in the region today by Siberian ethnic groups and people living in the extreme north. Aside from just fish, the bones of dogs, foxes, and wolverines were found inside the pits. This has created a bit of a problem for researchers because wolverines are not native to the area around the pits, instead found hundreds of miles away in the Russian taiga. Nobody has any idea how these people got a hold of wild wolverines, and now researchers think that this smoke site was used for ritual purposes. But according to the lead archaeologist, it's a huge mystery which we have yet to understand. Ancient Amazonia In the Amazon, archaeologists have found no less than 81 new archaeological sites. This discovery has confirmed that roughly 1 million people lived in a small region of the Amazon basin way before Europeans ever arrived. This is shocking because up until now, archaeologists believed the human populations of the Amazon were spread out in small areas. And believe it or not, it's thanks to the destructive deforestation in Bolivia and Brazil that the giant geometric shapes of what were once settlements were identified. Researchers use satellite images to find the ruins left behind in the soil. These aren't physical ruins, but geoglyphs, scars in the earth from where settlements once stood. 104 earthworks and over 81 settlements were found, and when the archaeologists finally went to the Amazon to check these places out for themselves, they found all kinds of treasures, from stone axes to ceramics and even ancient garbage dumps. The settlements vary in size and shape, from tiny villages to huge fortified cities with roads and plazas. The experts have no idea which culture dominated the region. They only know that the people had a major impact on the land, building and farming, and then basically vanishing. The truth here is that the Amazon is not quite as unexplored as we think. Back during the time of the Aztecs and the Maya, there was a whole world operating in the Amazonian jungle. The trouble is that when they were gone, the jungle took over the land again. The thing is, we just don't know what happened to them, where they went, or why they seemingly disappeared right before the Europeans showed up. Siberian Cave In another exciting find from Siberia, researchers have found a young girl's pinky finger in a cave. It was an intriguing find because researchers weren't sure if the girl was living in the cave, if she was passing through, or just what exactly was going on. Analysis showed that she was part of the Denisovans, a group of prehistoric people from over 50,000 years ago, but the specifics were a bit murky. Recently, state-of-the-art technology allowed the researchers to go back and do a DNA analysis on the pinky finger and a few molars found near it in the same cave. They found that the girl died 50,000 years ago and that whoever the teeth belonged to, a pair of individuals, 
had died 110,000 and 170,000 years ago. This is astonishing because it proves that within this mysterious Siberian cave, people lived collectively for at least 120,000 years, beginning nearly 200,000 years before today. To put that in perspective, humans have only been building cities for around 11,000 years. We were living in caves for around 20 times longer. But the discovery doesn't stop with evidence of the Denisovans. Archaeologists also found the toe bone and molar from a Neanderthal, as well as proof that humans even occupied the cave in more recent times. Neolithic Settlements NASA has discovered a weird archaeological mystery thanks to satellite pictures they took high in the sky above Kazakhstan. The pictures of a very remote steppe devoid of human habitation reveal geometric figures, huge rings, and mysterious lines several times larger than a football field. These huge earthworks are only discernible from the air, and the oldest among them has been estimated at 8,000 years old. One of these earthworks is a massive Neolithic settlement comprised of 101 raised mounds. It covers more terrain than the area around the Great Pyramid of Cheops. What's really fascinating is that according to the New York Times, these earthworks are entirely unstudied. There are trenches, ramparts, and the remains of ancient settlements, and nobody has investigated them. Compton J. Tucker, a biospheric scientist with NASA, recently said that he has never seen anything like this before. The entire region seems to have been hugely important thousands of years ago, yet the country of Kazakhstan has been horribly slow to send people to investigate. Some of the lines in the Earth may have been used as ground observatories for tracking the movement of the sun. But who built them? Historical records show the lands here were probably inhabited by tribes during the Stone Age who used them as hunting grounds. They may have been part of the very mysterious Mahanzar culture, who lived in the region from between 7000 BC and 5000 BC. What's confusing, scientists, is the fact that a nomadic population of hunters stayed in one place for long enough to build such weird structures and to make such impressive geoglyphs. Some of the ramparts are at least 10 feet high and 40 feet across, like primitive castle walls. They would have had no reason to build these, though, as there wouldn't have been wars fought by big armies. The purpose of this place is still a total mystery. Mystery Islands The islands of Nihoa and Mokumana Mana are part of the greater Hawaiian island chain. They are two of the most mysterious islands in the region, as archaeologists have found curious remains on both of them. They've discovered terraces, man-made platforms, and upright stones that look as though they were once part of a larger monolithic structure. They were dubbed the Mystery Islands by the first European sailors to come across them because they found the ruins and had no idea what they meant. And even today, archaeologists have little clue as to the people who lived here or the structures that they built. The first archaeological surveys were done in 1923. They noted cave shelters, the ruins of habitations, agricultural areas, and stone tools on both islands. They also found jars and bowls and strange stone carvings of faces that almost look extraterrestrial. Additional excavations were done in 2012 with help from the University of Hawaii. These researchers identified a complex ritual system that existed on the islands from between 1400 and 1800, so up until just under 300 years ago. The indigenous Hawaiians likely traveled to these islands to perform ritual ceremonies during seasonal changes, such as the summer solstice. The rulers of the time would perform elaborate ceremonies in which they believed they were inheriting the mana of their dead ancestors. Mana is considered spiritual energy, which when absorbed from dead ancestors would help to make the rulers wiser and to ensure prosperity during the coming harvest. Mount Nebo Mount Nebo is one of the most mysterious places in all of Jordan. It is considered to be the mountain where Moses witnessed the Promised Land before he died. Of course, the Promised Land in the Old Testament is Israel, which one can see from the top of the mountain. The Old Testament also says that Mount Nebo is where Moses lived out his final days and where his body was ultimately buried. However, despite decades of archaeological searching, his remains have never been found and so the story has never been scientifically proven. This site was already an important place of pilgrimage by the 4th century AD. A church and a sanctuary were built at the top to honor Moses. Then monks built a new Byzantine monastery in the 6th century. 
The mountain was ultimately abandoned in the 16th century, and the churches were left to become ruins. It wasn't until 1993 when the mountain was purchased by the Franciscans, who restored the site to its previous glory and opened it up to tourists. Zominthos Crete The mysterious archaeological site of Zominthos can be found high up in the mountains of central Crete, a place you might recognize as the largest of all the Greek islands. Crete is the birthplace of the Minoans, a mighty civilization that dominated the region from between 3100 and 1050 BC. The Minoans are widely regarded today as being the first advanced European civilization, even the first civilized civilization. They are best known for their seafaring ways. After all, they were a bunch of islanders. They were also extremely well known for their art, pottery, jewelry, and mysterious language that has only partially been deciphered. But recent excavations at Zominthos have shown they also excelled at living in the mountains. This extremely important site is 4,000 feet above the ocean. It's right in the middle of the ancient road that once led between the Great Palace in the city of Knossos and the sacred Idion Cave. Both of these places are significant in their own way. Knossos was the administrative capital of the Minoans. Idion Cave is the place where the Greeks believed that the great god Zeus was born and raised before he defeated the Titans and took his place on Mount Olympus. Between these two sites is Zominthos, where archaeologists have discovered hundreds of fantastic artifacts, from knife blades to ceramics, as well as ruined dwellings. They've also found some pretty shocking evidence in the area that the ancient Minoans were slowly pillaging their natural environment. The extensive farming and deforestation was slowly destroying their civilization and livelihood. But they most likely were destroyed by the massive volcanic eruption of Santorini, and may have been the people Plato was referring to in his legend of Atlantis. Santa Cristina Well There is a mysterious yet fascinating archaeological monument in Sardinia called the Santa Cristina Well. Technically, the well is only one aspect of Santa Cristina's sanctuary. The sanctuary was built in 1000 BC and is today in such an amazing state of preservation that it looks as though it were built just yesterday. It's an architectural marvel that from outside doesn't really look that interesting. There is a short rock wall surrounding a trapezoid entrance into a secret subterranean layer. Almost 3,000 years ago, the wall was intended to separate the internal sacred area of the structure from the profane outside. The well itself is inside the inner circle, at the bottom of the narrow staircase. In ancient times, this mysterious well was probably used by water cults for religious rituals. The biggest issue is that scientists can't agree on what exactly the ancient people here were doing in their rituals with the well. Some experts claim it was used as an astronomical observatory. The sun perfectly illuminates the bottom of the well by shining its light down the stairwell during each equinox. And then there's a strange phenomenon that has to do with the moon. Every 18 and a half years, the light from the moon passes directly through the top opening of the well. It's unclear what this could have represented, but it must have been an extremely spiritual and sacred place for these ancient people. Katalhuyuk the most recent archaeological excavations at the mysterious site of Katalhuyuk in Turkey have revealed even more homes from the Neolithic era. The reason this is so exciting is that Katalhuyuk is considered to be one of the oldest settlements built by ancient humans. It's one of the most important places of heritage on the UNESCO World Heritage List today. Originally discovered back in the 1960s by a British archaeologist named James Mellart, it wasn't until 1993 when archaeologists from Stanford got involved to do some real digging. Now, all these years later, archaeologists are still uncovering more and more secrets. We know the region has been inhabited by modern civilization since at least 3000 BC, for around 5000 years before today. It's been occupied by a long list of different people, from the Hittites to the Phrygians and the Persians to the Romans. But it was populated way before any of these groups existed. It was a settlement in Neolithic times, with a small community that flourished as far back as 7100 BC. The people here lived in houses built from mud, clustered together like a beehive. These houses were accessible only through openings in the ceilings. There were no streets, and people could just kind of roam from house to house from the rooftops. It was, for its time, an extremely impressive metropolis, where the earliest of civilized humanity lived together in relative comfort and safety. Unfortunately, the ancient city at Katalhuyuk was taken by the Turks in the 11th century and later destroyed, 
not to be found again until less than a hundred years ago. A warrior's tomb. A team of Russian archaeologists working with volunteers from France just recently unearthed a crypt in which a small collection of very disturbing bodies was found. Within the crypt were the skeletal remains of a family who had been buried together on the shores of the Black Sea. Researchers believe they were ancient Greeks from the colony of Phanagoria, and that the tomb was made for a rich and powerful warrior, his wife, and their three children. The crypt dates back to the 5th century AD, about 1500 years before today. Archaeologists say they know the Greek warrior was filthy rich because they found his skeleton adorned with silver buckles that had probably been on his sword belt. They also discovered the woman still wearing a gold necklace and traces of fabric that had once been part of some very expensive clothing. The children buried here were between two and seven years old when they died. Oddly enough, they died at the exact same time as their mother and father. In fact, all five members of the family died simultaneously. Scientists can't exactly say what happened, though they speculate that either there was some kind of local disease outbreak or the city became the victim of an attack by nomadic tribes perhaps even the Huns. Khat Shabib The archaeological site of Khat Shabib in Jordan has puzzled experts ever since it was found. This isn't really an archaeological site in the traditional sense, meaning it isn't a city or a crumbled palace or temple. Instead, it's just a really long wall, like really long. The ancient wall extends at least 93 miles through the Jordanian desert. What's crazy is that nobody knows why it's there who built it, or what it was supposed to be used for. The wall was first identified in 1948 by a British diplomat visiting Jordan. He noticed it while flying over the country in an airplane. He was quoted as having seen a stone wall that ran for no obvious purpose across the country. That was over 60 years ago, and archaeologists still haven't solved the mystery. They know that the wall runs from north to south, that in some places there are two walls running parallel, and at some places the wall even branches off. David Kennedy with the University of Western Australia says that even when the wall was first built, it was probably only about three feet high and less than two feet wide. It wouldn't have been very useful for keeping out invaders. They could have just stepped over the wall. That being said, archaeologists have discovered the remains of at least 100 small tower structures which may have been part of the wall, kind of like guard posts. Still, they don't see what these towers could have been used for. Bighorn Medicine Wheel the Bighorn Medicine Wheel is one of the most mysterious archaeological sites anywhere in the United States of America. It's a historic landmark at an elevation of over 9,500 feet, located near the peak of the Bighorn Mountains in central Wyoming. The Bighorn Medicine Wheel was once a Native American spiritual site during prehistoric times, in which tribal ceremonies would be carried out. In fact, some of these ceremonies are still going on today. But even though the Bighorn Medicine Wheel is the most famous, there are in fact at least 150 medicine wheels throughout Montana, South Dakota, Wyoming, and even in two Canadian provinces, Alberta and Saskatchewan. The one at Bighorn just so happens to be the biggest and the most well-preserved. It was also the first one to be studied by scientists. Most medicine wheels are in fact in Canada, with the oldest being in Alberta, dated back 5,500 years. The medicine wheel at Bighorn is less than 1,000 years old, making it one of the newer medicine wheels in the region. But just what exactly is a medicine wheel? It's a circular structure built of boulders with a diameter of about 80 feet and then 28 lines or spokes made from small rocks moving to a central cairn in the middle. Along the outside of the ring, there are five smaller stone clumps. It was in the 1970s that the solar scientist John Eddy claimed that the medicine wheel was probably used by Native Americans as a type of astronomical observatory. Today, the Native Americans use medicine wheels as places to build sweat lodges, altars, to go on vision quests, and much, much more. Land of the Blind Archaeologists in Turkey have discovered the ruins of a mysterious structure that was probably built in the 3rd century BC. The discovery was made during excavations at a historic train station on the Asian side of Istanbul. For those who don't know, Istanbul is the city in Turkey that's half in Europe and half in Asia. The structure that was just found probably has something to do with the ancient city of Chalcedon, the land of the blind. The city was first discovered by a Greek named Byzas, who was so shocked to find such a perfect location for a city that he said everyone who saw it before him must have been blind. Since Byzas was the first to step foot here, the new city was called Byzantium. 
Today, it's called Istanbul, but in 667 BC, Bayezus just called it the Land of the Blind. Unfortunately, archaeologists don't know much about the building uncovered from beneath the train station. It seems to be some kind of church, but they can't properly identify it yet. It's really nothing more than a bunch of crumbling stone walls from 2,500 years ago. The City of San Qingdui The ancient city of San Qingdui is rewriting Chinese history. This city was first discovered in the 1980s by researchers who found a pair of pits filled with weird artifacts such as elephant tusks, creepy gold masks, and bronze figures that kind of look like aliens with bulging eyes. These objects prove to be 3,000 years old and unlike anything else found in China. Since then, archaeologists have found an entire city. They found a giant city wall, thousands of artifacts, and hundreds of ruins. We now know that San Qingdui was the capital of a mysterious civilization that held great power and great technology. This civilization was flourishing right around the time that King Tut in Egypt was put inside of his legendary tomb. The mystery here is that nobody knows where the kingdom came from. Its origins are completely unknown. Chinese historians don't even have a clue, as there is absolutely no mention of it anywhere in historical texts. Plus, the artifacts are so bizarre and so unlike other artifacts from ancient Chinese sites that they have given no insight to the nameless culture from San Xingdui. Who was buried at Sutton Hu? Sutton Hu is the most mysterious and probably valuable archaeological site anywhere in the world. Located in England, it's an ancient burial ground that dates back 1,400 years discovered to be filled with hundreds of amazing artifacts and even a giant ship over 88 feet long. There are multiple graves here, but most were already pillaged by the time archaeologists found the cemetery. Even so, archaeologists have uncovered some of the most incredible ancient treasures in the world. Some of the weirdest artifacts came from within the giant ship. These include a gold belt buckle adorned with depictions of snakes and beasts, silverware from the Byzantine Empire, a sword hilt made from jewels that came from Sri Lanka, and ancient coins. The biggest mystery has been trying to figure out who was buried inside the ship. Archaeologists like Alex Wolf from the University of St. Andrew say it may have been King Raidwald, the ruler of East Anglia, who in his time had to decide whether the kingdom was going to be Christian or pagan. This was a confusing time in England, with the king building a temple with a Christian altar on one side and a pagan altar on the other. People were worshipping Christ while still paying homage to their pagan gods. Plain of Jars The Plain of Jars can be found in northern Laos. It is an ancient burial site that may have been used for up to 2,000 years. The people here stuffed their dead loved ones into giant jars and then left them strewn across a massive field. This went on mostly between 700 and 1,200 years ago, though the tradition may have begun at least 3,000 years ago. Louise Shewin with the University of Melbourne told Live Science that the ritual significance of burying the dead in jars lasted for an extremely long time, even if it was only practiced heavily for 500 years. Archaeologists have been studying this place for decades, with the most recent expedition coming to a close because of the COVID-19 pandemic. There are three megalithic jar sites in the area, with the biggest and most well-known being Site 1. Here, archaeologists have identified at least 400 jars across 60 acres. They all have human bones and teeth in them. Some have been buried under the ground, and some were just left sitting on the surface. What's even more bizarre is that in some instances, the bodies buried in the jars are younger than the jars themselves. This means the mysterious people who once practiced this bizarre funerary custom may have reused the jars though it's still a total mystery why people were buried in them in the first place. Elongated Skulls One of the most curious cultural coincidences from around the world is that elite ancient people would bind their skulls. Archaeologists in South Korea recently discovered an elongated skull very similar to those found in Mexico, Peru, and Europe. It seems the cultural phenomenon of purposely mutilating the human skull to make it longer and more prominent was more widespread than previously thought. The elongated skull was found inside an ancient Korean coffin from the 6th century and belonged to a woman. By analyzing the bones, researchers were able to figure out the woman died sometime in her late 30s and had been part of the Silla Kingdom, the dynasty that ruled all of the Korean peninsula from between 57 BC to until the year 935 AD. They also looked at the carbon isotopes in her bones to see that she had eaten mostly a vegetarian diet of wheat and rice. 
This is thought to be evidence of the Buddhist influence in the ancient Silla kingdom. But the weird coincidence here is that she had a skull like an alien. It's hard to believe that the practice of cranial deformation somehow spread from ancient Peru all the way to the Korean peninsula. It literally doesn't make any sense, since these two cultures never had any contact with one another. So why did so many cultures from the past believe in the need for these large skulls? It was a complicated process that had to be started practically from birth, and could have dangerous side effects. Why do societies value this type of head shape? And why would this group want to stand out from the rest of their people? For many, the easy explanation is that they learned the practice from an outside source that contacted them. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. The Third Eye The Third Eye has a long history in India and Asia, everywhere that Buddhism and Taoism has spread. Evidence of a third eye can be seen in sculptures and paintings all across Asia and the Indian subcontinent. According to modern spiritualists, the third eye is an ancient power that every person possesses, and ancient cultures have known about it and believed in it for thousands of years. The third eye is accessible by any person and can endow them with a higher consciousness, a greater perception of the world around them, and even in some rare cases, clairvoyance. But of course, the exact definition of the third eye varies depending on which spiritualist you are talking to. Still, the third eye can be found in all Eastern religions, even Hinduism. It's clearly marked in statues by a dot in the middle of the forehead, and it's honestly quite hard to miss. But here is where things get a little strange. Archaeologists and historians have all but ignored the blatant proof that Mesoamericans knew just as much about the third eye as the people in Asia. Cultures like the Maya, the Olmec, the Aztec, and even the Inca knew about the third eye and incorporated it into their artwork and sculptures. It looks a little different than in the eastern part of the world, but a very distinct circular shape can be seen in the middle of the forehead on funerary masks, statues of gods, and on the giant head sculptures left behind by the extremely mysterious Olmec people. Richard Cassaro, who loves to study these types of coincidences, is wondering why historians seem to have ignored this. But the coincidence is there for anyone to see. Hand Motifs Paintings and symbols of hand motifs have been sighted almost everywhere in the world. Most are upwards of 10,000 years old, likely created by the most ancient people on Earth. But what's really strange is that almost all the hand motifs found in cave art around the globe are nearly identical. Hand paintings have been made in a variety of ways, such as with stencils, with paint sprayed from the mouth, with charcoal powder, or with paints and brushes. Still, the results are eerily similar, with the handprints of men, women, and children being found on prehistoric cave walls from France to Argentina. What anthropologists can't figure out is the significance behind the motifs. Why did basically every branch of humanity decide to paint their hands on cave walls? Did it have something to do with a mysterious ancient ritual? Is it all just a coincidence? We have no definitive answers. And here is another bizarre part of the mystery. Many hand paintings have been found with a missing finger. In other words, whoever made the cave paintings was either missing one of their fingers or chose not to put it. Whole groups of people with just three fingers and a thumb have been leaving their handprints on the rock. Experts have guessed that it could be some type of sign language or symbolism. Other experts believe some primitive people were mutilating themselves on purpose by cutting off one of their fingers as part of a gruesome ceremony. The Chinese Sphinx There is a crazy historical theory floating around that China was created by a group of Egyptian migrants thousands of years ago. The theory says the Egyptians, or at least the great descendants of Egyptians, made their way to China and brought with them some of their culture, which gradually morphed into ancient Chinese culture. There isn't much proof of this, other than some pretty strange coincidences. For example, an ancient tomb in northwest China has revealed a sphinx carved from marble that looks incredibly similar to the famous sphinx in front of the Great Pyramid of Giza. The cemetery was uncovered on what was once a route along the Silk Road. The statue is just over one foot tall, with the face of a human and the body of a lion. According to an epitaph found inside the tomb, the body buried here was Liu Jun and his wife, who had lived sometime during the Tang Dynasty between 618 and 907. They didn't necessarily do anything of major historical importance, 
but the fact that their remains were guarded by a sphinx is extraordinary. According to Fan Jun, the head of the excavation team, sphinx are highly unusual in Chinese tombs from this particular period. Nobody really knows where they got the inspiration for the sphinx, or if it does indeed have ties to ancient Egypt. There were over 150 artifacts taken from the tomb, with only one of them being linked to the art of the Egyptians. So it must have been quite special. Egyptians and the Mayans Speaking of a bizarre connection with the Egyptians, here's something that will shock you. The one culture on Earth that has the most in common with ancient Egypt is undoubtedly the Maya. Not only did both of these cultures build some of the most impressive pyramid structures in the world, they also both used hieroglyphic writing systems that were shockingly similar. Yes, it's true that the Mayan pyramids were built thousands of years after the Egyptian pyramids, but that doesn't change the fact that the Maya never met the Egyptians and still found a way to copy them from across the ocean. To give you a rough timeline, the Egyptian pyramids were built 2,000 years before the ones found in Mexico, Guatemala, and Belize. But what about the hieroglyphics? It seems unbelievable that two cultures separated by so much time and distance would come up with almost the same system of writing, yet it's true. The Egyptians and the Mayans used special symbols to convey thought and meaning. The Egyptian hieroglyphics were significantly more intricate, found on everything from pieces of jewelry to shards of pottery. Mayan hieroglyphics were mostly carved in stone and are considered more basic and primitive. Still, it's the core nature of the writing itself that counts. Even separated by time and space, the Mayans managed to follow in the footprints of the Egyptians. I want to give a big shout out to Jeff Soltis, I'm so glad you're enjoying the animations, and to Chris Crow. Thanks so much for supporting Origins Explained. If you are new here, be sure to subscribe for more videos like these. Greek and Roman Gods You may have noticed there are some serious similarities between the Roman gods and the Greek gods. This cultural coincidence is actually more of the Romans absorbing the Greek pantheon. For example, the Greeks had Zeus and the Romans turned Zeus into Jupiter. Both were the king of the gods and wielded magical lightning bolts. The goddess of marriage in Greece was Hera and in Rome it was Juno. The Romans had Diana for the goddess of hunting and the Greeks had Artemis. But how did this happen? As you can tell, this is much more than just a coincidence. The Romans didn't just incorporate Greek beliefs, they stole them and then renamed them. The story of how this happened starts in 146 BC. The Romans invaded Greece at a time when they hadn't really developed their own gods yet. The Romans were acutely aware that trying to conquer Greece and keep it conquered would be infinitely more difficult if they tried to impose their own gods on them. So the Romans simply adopted the Greeks' beliefs and then let their gods and deities mingle with their own. But even before the Romans invaded Greece, they were both stealing gods from other ancient cultures. Rome took Isis from the Egyptians and renamed her Magma Mater. Even Greece stole the Hittite god Apollyunas and renamed him Apollo. The list goes on and on. Pine Cones Pine cones have been used by more ancient civilizations than you can ever imagine. They were considered symbols of fertility by the Assyrians, the Romans, the Greeks, and even the Christians. It's one of the most prevalent symbols anywhere in ancient cultures. The staff of Osiris has a pine cone at the top. Hindu gods are usually shown holding pine cones in their hands, and Assyrian carvings from over 3,000 years ago depict pine cones being used as fertilizer for the tree of life. It also goes to the other side of the world, with statues uncovered in places like Mexico depicting pine cones. So, what's the deal with the pine cone? Experts theorize that the pine cone is associated with the pineal gland, or what some refer to as the third eye. But it goes even deeper than that, with multiple ancient cultures associating pine cones with eternal life. The Aztec god of corn, Chicomecoat, is seen in statues holding the pine cone and the evergreen leaf as symbols of agricultural life. But it's a bit different with the ancient Celts and Romans, who thought of pine cones as fertility symbols. Celts used to put pine cone fertility charms under their pillows at night, and Romans gave them as offerings to Venus, the goddess of love. The weird thing is that nobody knows why so many ancient cultures adored the pine cone. It's a total mystery that doesn't have much hope of ever being solved. The Sumerian Birdman the Sumerian Birdman is a strange phenomenon that suggests the ancient Sumerians had a presence in South America. Sculptures and carvings of a Sumerian god named Oans, 
an amphibious being who rose from the ocean to teach mankind cosmic wisdom, are ripe throughout much of ancient Mesopotamia, but they've also been found in Ecuador, just a little different. The Sumerian carvings show a god walking upright, one arm bent in front of his face, holding a mysterious handbag in the other. Carvings uncovered in Ecuador show the exact same thing. The only difference is, instead of having the face of a man and the head of a fish, the carvings found in Ecuador show a being with the head of an eagle. But the position is exactly the same, with the left hand clutching a mysterious bag and the right hand bent in front of the face. They could be exact copies of each other if not for the difference in heads. Now things get even stranger as we take a look at ancient Assyria. An identical figure as the one seen in Ecuador was discovered at the ancient palace of Sargon of Akkad. This particular statue appears to be holding a piece of maize, corn that was grown by the Maya and not even known about by the rest of the world until the 1400s. The obvious connection here is that the old kingdoms of Mesopotamia were in direct contact with the Mesoamerican cultures of South America and Central America thousands of years before the Maya even existed. How this is possible is a complete mystery. Ancient Basketball One of the most bizarre cultural similarities that we share today with the ancient Maya of yesterday is basketball. What a lot of people don't know is that the ancient Maya love playing ball games. A construction crew working in the Yucatan recently stumbled upon one of these ancient ball courts near the Technological University in Merida. Archaeologists were called to the scene and were shocked when they realized they were standing in a ball court where the Maya played a very primitive version of basketball that involved human sacrifice. The game was called Tlachtli, and it was played as far back as the Olmec and as recently as the Aztec. The point of the game was to throw a ball through a hoop at either end of a court. If that sounds familiar, it's because that's the point of basketball. The only difference with the Maya game is that they were not allowed to use their hands. They had to kick the ball through the extremely narrow hole in the stone hoop. This made it an incredibly difficult game. And to make things even harder, the losers of the game sometimes had their heads chopped off. Nobody knows for sure if this was the original inspiration for the game of basketball played today, but it is a pretty big coincidence that the Maya and Aztec played a game almost identical to our very own basketball. Ancient Cannabis as it turns out, ancient cultures from all over the world had one specific plant that they really enjoyed smoking. This is the cannabis plant, the one that is still extremely popular and very controversial to this day. In ancient Egypt, cannabis was used to treat a wide variety of ailments, things like glaucoma and feminine health, as well as pain management in general. The use of cannabis has been described in ancient Egyptian texts going by the name Shemshemet. This stuff was also used in funeral rituals in ancient Egypt and during the mummification process. Archaeologists were shocked when they discovered cannabis pollen on the mummified remains of Ramses the Great, the famous pharaoh who died in 1213 BC. Even more shocking is that the highest concentration of THC, the chemical in cannabis that causes a person to become intoxicated, was found inside the lungs. This suggests it was smoked. Scientists also found nicotine and cocaine along with the THC, hinting that the Egyptians partied pretty hard. But it wasn't only the Egyptians who smoked the stuff. Evidence of cannabis use has been found in China, Israel, Greece, India, Rome, and all throughout North America and South America. In ancient times, cannabis was one of the most popular plants grown and smoked by just about everyone. Pompeii Mummy in the ruined city of Pompeii, Italy, archaeologists have uncovered a mysterious tomb and a mummified corpse. Researchers with the University of Valencia in Spain made the incredible find. But since then, it's been boggling scientists, because the customs of the time dictated that the bodies of adults were to be cremated, not buried, and certainly not mummified. This is now the only tomb uncovered in Pompeii that has a burial chamber. And because of how well preserved the city of Pompeii is, thanks to the eruption that blanketed the city in ash, the tomb revealed quite a bit about the dead man inside of it. Here's what archaeologists have found out so far. The mummy belongs to a man named Marcus Venerius Secundio. His tomb was constructed probably within the decade before the city was destroyed. The dead man was once a public slave turned guardian of the local temple of Venus. He managed to achieve a high economic status upon being freed, and he even found himself a wife, who researchers discovered inside the tomb. 
They found a glass container with the ash remains of a woman who went by the name Novia Amabilis. But then why was this man not cremated? Perhaps he had his own customs from his past. The only thing archaeologists can come up with is that he had a fascination with Greek culture, because in Greece at the time, burials were preferred over cremations. Medieval Castle At Sultan Hall in the United Kingdom, researchers have discovered the sandstone walls of a medieval castle. They've also found a few trinkets that may have been left behind by religious pilgrims visiting the site. For years, the owners of Sultan Hall, an Elizabethan estate, were wondering what the mysterious dirt mounds were in their backyard. The owners of the estate called in archaeologists, who then uncovered evidence of human habitation going back thousands of years, surprising the landowners. Excavations show that a huge castle once stood on the grounds. The castle dates back to around the 13th century, with researchers from Cardiff University uncovering sandstone walls and pieces of timber which they believe may have been part of a moat that encircled the small castle fortress. The castle stood on the road to the ancient village of Wem, perhaps protecting the small village from troublemakers. Sultan Hall was built in the 1600s, meaning the estate must have gone up just a few years after the castle was destroyed, or even while it still stood. The whole area has been occupied by some of the wealthiest members of English society ever since 1086. But its history is even richer than that. Previous excavations uncovered Neolithic flint from 5,500 years ago, meaning the grounds of Sultan Hall have a history that goes back at least 7,500 years. Rock of the Fairies The ancient dolmen discovered in France is the largest in the entire world. If you're wondering what a dolmen is, these structures are basically the oldest graves found throughout much of Europe. Many of them go back at least 5,000 years, just like this one. They were used as burial structures with someone, researchers don't usually know who, buried beneath. This one is an incredible ancient specimen, a kind of passage tomb made of 32 stones acting as the walls and 9 giant stones as the roof slabs. This structure itself is a giant compared to most of the dolmens found around the world, measuring 60 feet long and at its highest point is roughly 12 feet high. The heaviest stone used to build the monument weighs roughly 40 tons. But how did ancient people manage to lift such heavy stones? This particular dolmen found in France comes from between 4,500 and 5,000 years ago during the late Neolithic period, and yet no excavations have been made at the site. Nothing has been found except for the dolmen's huge stones. There could be bodies underneath, priceless artifacts, who knows what else? Local legend says the site was built by fairies overnight to prove that they existed, and that if a pair of lovers comes to the site and counts the same number of stones, they will be happy forever. Back in the day, the passage grave would have been covered by a pile of stones called a cairn, so it would have even been much larger thousands of years ago. As of now, nobody knows who built the dolmen, how many people are buried under the soil, or why the ancient people went through such great lengths to make it in the first place. Ancient Roman Eggs Archaeologists recently cracked open some ancient eggs that date back to the Roman occupation of Great Britain. It happened when they were excavating a settlement in central England that was founded 1700 years ago. They got a nose full of history when they accidentally broke open the eggs that had been sitting there for nearly 2,000 years. The eggs came from chickens, and they were left behind in an ancient community along an old Roman road. The eggs were inside of a pit, which is how they managed to stay preserved for so long buried in the soil. Other artifacts found with the eggs include a wooden basket, a pair of leather shoes, and some tools. As the archaeologists were trying to retrieve the artifacts, they accidentally cracked open two of the eggs, which released a potent rotten egg smell that scared them right out of the pit. That's a 2,000-year-old smell. Can you imagine? Only a single egg managed to be taken out intact, and it's now being celebrated as the only complete Roman egg to ever be recovered from Britain. The dig project manager, Stuart Foreman, called it an incredible find. He and his colleagues believe the pit was originally used for malting grain, which was then used in beer. But by the end of the 3rd century, the pit had turned into a kind of wishing well where the residents tossed things in as offerings to the gods like eggs and coins, and apparently their leather shoes. The Cult of the Rain God Tlaloc is the oldest and mightiest of the Mesoamerican gods. 
The name translates to something like he who makes things sprout or the nectar of the earth. Tlaloc represents the essence of rain and thunder, with the ancient Aztecs beseeching him to strengthen the clouds and send rain to grow their crops. He was one of the most important and formidable gods of the Aztec Empire. Not only did they call on him for rain and water, but he was also important for fertility. Effigies and images of the rain god have been found all throughout Teotihuacan in figurines and carvings, though the origin of Tlaloc goes back much further to the Olmec culture. They worshipped a similar god named Anue, who may have been the inspiration for Tlaloc who came later. Tlaloc is quite scary in Aztec culture. He is shown wearing a strange mask with large round eyes and long fangs. Every culture in Mesoamerica worshipped Tlaloc, they just did it under different names. For the Zapotec culture from what is now modern Oaxaca in Mexico, he was called Pitao Cosijo. To the Mayans, he was known as Chac. In archaeology, there is no place more sacred to the old worshippers of Tlaloc than the Templo Mayor at Tenochtitlan, the ancient capital of the Aztecs. Archaeologists have uncovered proof of rituals and other ceremonies here dedicated to the rain god. Tlaloc had his own temple at the top of the pyramid next to a temple dedicated to the warlord god Huitzilopochtli, and both of them were very thirsty for blood and required sacrifice. Just want to give a big shout out to Josie Bunny and Iman Guha, who is a new subscriber. Welcome and thanks so much for supporting this channel. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already to join the Origins Explained family. The Cockno Stone This strange and mysterious stone panel known as the Cockno Stone was unearthed in Clydebank, the United Kingdom, after 50 years buried under the dirt. The stone itself dates back to the year 3000 BC but it was buried in 1965 after archaeologists stumbled upon it and didn't know how to keep it safe. Archaeologists couldn't physically remove the stone because of its size. It measures about 24 feet by 39 feet. That's about as long as a semi-trailer and twice as tall as a giraffe. So they took some pictures and then buried it to protect it from the weather and vandals. This thing is huge, one of the greatest examples of Neolithic markings anywhere in Europe. The stone is covered in bizarre symbols and rings, though they don't tell researchers much about the stone's history because no one really understands what these things mean. Nobody knows who made it 5,000 years ago or what its purpose was. The only reason it was dug up now is that archaeologists wanted to use new 3D imaging technology to digitally record its surface and try to better understand this mysterious artifact. Dr. Kenny Brophy from Glasgow University says the Cockno Stone is the biggest Neolithic art panel in Europe, which is wild because it's sitting in the middle of a suburb. Unfortunately, modern graffiti was found on its surface, suggesting that even though it was buried, vandals still managed to get to it. The Great Flood Researcher Ronnie Gallagher believes he has solved one of the biggest questions in ancient Egyptian history. For decades, Historians have been trying to figure out why the original settlers in Egypt made their great civilization in the Nile Valley and where they originally came from. Ronnie says it's because of a catastrophic flood that doused huge parts of Eurasia and forced people to migrate to places of safety like the Nile Valley. This theory is backed up by ancient Egyptian texts that describe some of the earliest burial rituals in the country as taking dead people back to their ancestral homelands. What's even more shocking is that Ronnie believes the flood may have been similar to the biblical flood in which Noah built his great ark. If Ronnie's research is to be believed, the ancestral homeland of the Egyptians is actually modern Azerbaijan. It's not that far away, so it's no surprise that after a great flood, the locals would have strayed into Egypt almost 8,000 years ago. To back up this theory, mollusks and small marine fossils have been found in the area that date back to 7750 BC. There was almost definitely a great flood, though this was way before the Bible was ever written. Then, after the Egyptians settled along the Nile, it took them just over 2,000 years to start building their pyramids. Mysterious Coins A tour guide in Israel named Yotam Dahan was out camping with his family on a beach near the hamlet of Atlit when he stumbled upon an extraordinary archaeological discovery. It was a green clump of metal that turned out to be 13 pounds of ancient coins from 1,700 years ago. It was basically a cannonball made out of rusted old coins. After Dahan posted pictures of this shocking discovery online, the Israel Antiquities Authority got in touch with him. 
They sent a coin expert to determine how old and how valuable the coins truly were. Because by law, you have to report your finds in case they are deemed a national treasure. It turns out they were minted during the 4th century AD. Additionally, scraps of cloth left clinging to the clump of coins shows that they were probably packed in a bag. Somebody was walking around with 13 pounds of cash in a sack when something happened and they lost their treasure. What happened to the owner of the coins is anyone's guess. The area was used as a harbor where ships docked overnight in ancient times. It's possible that the cache of coins belonged to a ship and was meant to be used for trade when the bag somehow went overboard and was lost underwater. Throughout the next almost 2,000 years, the shifting tides gradually pushed the giant clump of coins onto the beach, where Dahan accidentally found them. Christian Inscription Researchers believe they have discovered the earliest surviving Christian inscription in history, taken from a medieval tower in the suburbs of Rome. The inscription is written in Greek and dates back to the 2nd century AD. Back then, the Roman Empire was at its peak of power and influence. The only other written remains that have anything to do with Christianity from this period are fragments of old papyrus that quote part of the Gospels. The stone inscription only alludes to the beliefs of Christians at the time. Gregory Snyder from Davidson College in North Carolina says the inscription incorporates both Christian and pagan beliefs. The man who wrote the inscription is believed to have followed the teachings of Valentinus, one of the earliest preachers of Christianity who was ultimately declared a heretic by Rome. He taught that nothing in the physical world mattered, so nothing that you did in life mattered once you died. It only mattered what you believed in. His teachings were probably inspired both by Christ and Plato. It was a very unique mashup and one of the earliest forms of Christianity widely practiced. In any case, this is the earliest stone inscription that directly mentions the Father and the Son, meaning God and Jesus. Who exactly wrote it or why? That's a mystery that will probably never be solved. Number 1. Hugging Skeletons Archaeologists recently exhumed two skeletons from an ancient burial site in China who were entombed hugging each other. When the archaeologists dug up their grave, they found them still locked in a powerful embrace that lasted far beyond death. One skeleton is of a man, the other is of a woman. We don't know whether they were best friends or lovers, but we do know that they died about 1,500 years ago. The woman was discovered with a plain silver ring on her finger, so in all likelihood, the couple was married. According to the researchers involved with the discovery, the couple was buried during the Northern Wei Dynasty between 386 and 534. This was a very turbulent time for society since Buddhism was rapidly spreading through China. The division of beliefs was causing problems for people while changing the way they viewed life after death. This joint burial could be proof of an emerging importance in everlasting love. Chun Zhang, associate professor with Tiananmen University, called it a rare glimpse of the concepts of love, as well as life, death, and the afterlife in ancient China. As for the cause of death, it's pretty grim. Judging by an unhealed injury to the man's right arm, archaeologists say he probably died from the wound and then his wife died shortly after to be with him in the afterlife. Either that, or they both died of a mysterious illness at the same time. Thanks for watching! If you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit that thumbs up button and subscribe for more! See you next time! Bye!